We have been looking at the importance of the prophetic books of the Bible. We are doing a quick overview of some of the main topics in the prophetic books. Our purpose is not to do an in-depth study of the books, but to get a glimpse of how important these books are for the church of our time. The main verse we should remember when we study any Old Testament stories is Paul's statement in his first letter to the Corinthian church. Listen to what Paul says about what is recorded in the Old Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6 to 13. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality, as some of them did, and in one day 23,000 of them died. We should not test Christ, as some of them did, and were killed by snakes, and do not grumble, as some of them did, and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. All the stories written in the Old Testament have been recorded as an example for us. We are to learn from the good and the bad examples of the people in the stories. We are to take warning from the things that happened to them. One of the major problems with the modern church is that they wrongly believe that the God of the Old Testament is somehow different than the God of the New Testament. The modern church does not take warning from the stories of God's wrath and punishment in the Old Testament. Paul says that these stories happened and were written down as examples, as warnings for us, who live at the culmination of the ages. Let us remember that the stories of the Old Testament become more relevant as the day of Jesus' return approaches. Paul asks us to test ourselves with the stories and be careful not to fall. He says that the temptations that we will face are no different from the ones that were faced by the people of God in the past. Last week, we saw that the major problem Ezra faced when he arrived in Jerusalem was that the people of God including their leaders, had intermarried with the evil nations around them. We have seen that the New Testament prophesies that the church will also allow the world and false teachers to change it. Ezra's reaction to the sin he found in Jerusalem was to tear his clothes and pull out his hair. Because Ezra devoted himself to God's word, he understood the punishment and judgment associated with the sin that was being committed. Ezra's reaction helped the people realize what a great sin they were committing. Ezra brought about repentance among the people. As Christians, we must not allow this world to dull our understanding of how evil sin is. Like Ezra, we must show the proper reaction to sin. In the time of Ezra, the people had to choose between continuing to live with their evil families or following God. Jesus teaches us that we cannot put our families before Him. We cannot allow our love for our families to carry us away from God. 
In the last days, Jesus said that families will turn against their own members. Listen to the warning that Jesus gives. Matthew 10, verse 16 to 22. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brothers will betray brothers to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Although these words were spoken specifically for the disciples, they are also clearly for the whole church. Once more we see Jesus calling his followers to stand firm to the end. It is important to understand that we are like sheep among wolves. Without this understanding, we will not be on our guard. We will not be shrewd. Jesus says that in the last days, brothers will betray brothers to death, and a father will betray his child. The command found in the Bible to love God above our families is not meant to separate us from our families, but to guard us against being carried away by them into eternal condemnation. Let us start today by looking at the events of the time of the prophet Haggai. The prophet Haggai lived during the time when some of the people of God had returned to Jerusalem. Because of the opposition, the people of God had stopped building God's temple and instead built their own homes. They were living at peace, but were neglecting the temple of God. Listen to what the prophet Haggai says. Haggai chapter 1 verse 2 to 5. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, The time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses? while the house remains in ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says, Give careful thought to your ways. Because of opposition, the people of God stopped trying to build God's temple and focused on building their own homes. In order to justify their behavior, they said it was not the right time to build the temple. Let us understand that Satan will not oppose Christians if they focus their attention on building their own homes. Satan will only attempt to stop Christians when they are working on building the kingdom of God. Health and prosperity preaching churches will face very little persecution in this world because they are focused on building earthly homes. They are not doing the work of God. The prophet Haggai says, that we should give careful thought to our ways. We must make sure that we are not building our own kingdoms here on earth and ignoring our main call to build the kingdom of God. It is easy for Christians to focus their life on building for themselves. Please understand that we are not talking about a physical home here. We are talking about the focus of our life. God actually wanted the people to have homes the problem was not that they had nice homes. The problem was that they completely ignored God and His work. Who are you living for? Are you too busy working for yourself that you have no time to use your gift to build the kingdom of heaven? God wants us to consider the way we live. Let us remember the extremely important words of Jesus. Matthew 6, verse 19 to 24. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermins destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, 
your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Having a nice home is not the issue here. Some very godly people live in very nice homes and have good jobs. The Bible says that we cannot focus our minds on the things of this earth. We must focus our heart's attention on building the kingdom of God. We must make sure that we are serving God with all our hearts, despite what job we do for a living. The people of Haggai's time had completely ignored God because doing His work was hard. When the people of God focused their attention on their own lives, their enemies left them alone. Although the people had built nice homes, God was not blessing their work. The prophet Haggai asked the people to consider their lives and think about their ways. Haggai chapter 1, verse 6 to 9 You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages, only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house, so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? declares the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains in ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. A person may be rich, but not find satisfaction in their life. According to King Solomon, only God can give joy. Only God can allow someone to enjoy what they have. A poor person can find great pleasure in a small meal because of the joy God gives him. A rich man can find no pleasure in his wealth because he has forsaken God. In the end times, it is going to be very tempting to focus our life on building our worldly homes. God cannot bless us spiritually if we do not seek His kingdom. We cannot allow the church to be in ruins while we focus on building our own houses. The command to stop and examine ourselves is also found in the New Testament. It is very easy to lose focus. The people of Israel had returned to their homeland. These people were excited to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple, but were quickly met with opposition. Because of the opposition, the people of God were sidetracked. For about 20 years, they built their own homes and eventually completely lost all desire to build the temple. As Christians, we can lose our focus, and this is why we are called to sit down and think about what we are doing with our lives. Listen to the words of Paul for the Corinthian church. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 to 8. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong, not so that people will see that we have stood the test, but so that you will do what is right even though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. Paul asks us to test ourselves to see if we are in the faith. There were many people in the Corinthian church that were living in wickedness and yet calling themselves Christians. Paul asked the church to get rid of these hypocrites, and yet he asked the church to examine themselves as well. Examining yourself is a good practice, one that the Bible encourages us to do. There are not many practices in the church that could be classified as a ritual or a sacrament except for that of baptism 
and communion. Baptism is an outward demonstration of becoming part of the body of Christ. When someone is baptized, they are showing the commitment they have made inwardly to God in an outward fashion. Baptism shows the world that you have died to yourself and that you now live life for God. Communion is an outward expression of our belonging to the body of Christ. During the communion, we remember the grace of God poured out to us on the cross. In communion, we remember what has brought unity between believers and God. When we participate in communion, we declare our future hope that one day we will be united with God forever. Those who take communion identify themselves as Christians. They proclaim to be part of the body of Christ. Those who take communion but are living in sin will bring judgment upon themselves. When Paul teaches the church about communion, he tells them that they should examine themselves before taking it. Although we can sit down at any time to think about our life and the direction that we are taking, Communion offers us a good opportunity to do so. It is a good practice for Christians to examine their life. It is a good practice to do this before every communion service. Listen to what Paul says. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 to 32. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regards to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. The Israelites had become comfortable with their lives, and yet they were not satisfied or blessed by God. If they had taken time to consider their life, they might have repented and turned back to God a long time before the prophet Haggai woke them up. Let us be careful not to fall asleep and become comfortable in our lives. Let us focus our attention on God every now and then to make sure that we have not taken a fork in the road and headed the wrong direction. The Bible teaches us about people who will receive eternal life but only as one snatched out of the fire, not as someone who has lived well and is worthy of receiving a reward. Some people may live their whole entire life serving God, and yet when their work is tested at the final judgment, none of what they have done has eternal value. We can work for God and yet neglect His house. We can live for Christ and yet neglect His church completely. Listen to what Paul says, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8 to 15. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burnt up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Each person in the church 
have a ministry given to them by God. Although we are not all called into full-time ministry, every Christian has been given a spiritual gift to use for the kingdom of God. Paul says that everyone will receive a reward according to the work that they have done. Paul is not talking about the reward of salvation. Salvation is a free gift that is given to us by the grace of God. Nobody will receive salvation as a reward for their work. Paul is talking about rewards received in heaven above and beyond eternal life. Paul asks us to live our life with care, to serve God with care in order that we may not lose our rewards. If you lay the foundation of Christ in your life, you will receive eternal life. How you build on that foundation of Christ is up to you. Paul says that there are a variety of materials that can be used. Some will build with precious things such as gold, silver, and costly stones. Other people will build on the foundation of Christ with materials such as wood, hay, and straw. These materials have no eternal value. The Bible teaches that our works will be tested by God with a fire. God will test the quality of your work. If your service was done out of a pure heart, the fire will not destroy it, and you will receive a reward for what you have done on earth. If the good works that you performed did not come out of a pure heart, none of what you have done will give you an eternal reward. All those who have faith in Jesus will receive eternal life, but not everyone's service towards God will be rewarded. Listen to what the Bible says about what is valuable. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. According to Paul, the action and works of man have no eternal value unless they come from a pure and sincere heart of love. Balaam was able to prophesy correctly and had amazing powers, but his work had no eternal value. As Christians, we must make sure that we are using our gifts for the kingdom of God. We must make sure that we are focused on God and serving Him with all our hearts. We must make sure that we do not ignore God's church while building our own life in this world. Remember the following verse, Matthew 6.33, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. If we keep our mind focused on God's kingdom, God will then make sure that we receive everything that we need. This is not a promise of prosperity but of provision for our needs. A righteous person focuses on building God's kingdom. When our focus is correct, God will help us build our own homes as well. The person focused on building his own house will never turn to God's kingdom. Let us make sure that we test our own actions and our own focus so that we do not get drawn into living for this world. Before we continue with Haggai, let us read one more verse about testing ourselves. Galatians 6, verse 3-5 If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Those of us who are in full-time ministry must make sure that we do not deceive ourselves. Many people have built huge ministries that ended up being a house of cards when tested. In order not to be deceived, we must test our own actions. We must look at the heart that is behind our actions. 
Paul makes sure to say that we should not compare our actions with other people. Do not compare your life with that of someone else. Test your heart with scripture. Do not test the amount of work you do, but the quality of the work you do. Are you serving God selfishly or out of love? As we finish off today, we are going to return to the theme that has come up over and over again lately, that of separation. Listen to what God says to his people through Haggai. Haggai chapter 2 verse 10 to 14. On the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Ask the priest what the law says. If someone carries consecrated meat in the fold of their garment, and that fold touches some bread or stew, some wine, olive oil, or other food, does it become consecrated? The priests answered, No. Then Haggai said, If a person defiled by contact with a dead body touches one of these things, does it become defiled? Yes, the priest replied, it becomes defiled. Then Haggai said, So it is with the people and this nation in my sight, declares the Lord. Whatever they do and whatever they offer there is defiled. Christians must understand that they cannot live mindlessly and still receive God's blessing. The presence of God in our life does not make sinful actions okay. This world and our sinful actions will affect us negatively. We cannot redeem evil practices. We cannot mess with this world and expect to remain righteous. The people of Israel were to separate themselves from the people around them and they were not to live like them. The thinking and practice of this world will defile us. The church should not expect to have a good ministry if it lives a worldly life. Christians cannot expect spiritual blessings if they continue living their life the same way their culture does. Many churches are guilty of the same sin that was committed in Jerusalem in the past. While their churches are destroyed morally, they are content living in their paneled homes. Although they may have a comfortable life, their spiritual life is unproductive. In order to receive a reward when we reach heaven, let us all make sure that we are focused on building God's kingdom and not our own. May God help us not to be deceived by our own evil hearts. May God bless you and your family.